So you get given this 38 degrees here. The first angle I see that's easy to get is this one over here. Angle standing on the same arc. That's got to be 38 over there. Now, alternatively, the next easiest one, or maybe the equal easiest one, is that this 38 and this 38 are alternate angles on parallel lines. Please indicate parallel lines. You can see I've reasoned there. I don't know what they're called, but they're parallel. Uh, and then lastly, you can either go from either of these up to here, again for the same reasons. If I went from here to here, it would be alternate angles. If I went from here to here, it would be angles standing on the same arc. Okay? Part B. Here we go. I've got 115 degrees up in the top. What can I do with that 150 degrees? Yeah, over here on the opposite corner, that's got to be 65 because opposite angles in a psychic quadrilateral are supplementary. Okay? Once you've got that 65, it's trivial from there because you've got the isosceles triangle. So I think this is your unknown. So 2K plus 65, that'll give you the angle of the triangle. And my answer is 57 and a half. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, great. And last circle geometry. Okay. Again, you've got a variety of things that you can see immediately. Right? So for starters, this guy over here, that's B, right? Straight away, because you know this is a diameter, B is equal to? 90 degrees, reason. <laughs> and on a semicircle, it's a right angle. You 12, stay with me. What else can I do? Where else would you go? Okay, I can say, here, this is the angle between the tangent and the chord, and so the angle in the alternate segment that's formed by that chord must be the same as the angle between the tangent and the chord. Okay, so or there you, you just go. Do the line and the right, that's that's also going to work. Or and then you got your last one here. You can either go angle sum of a triangle because I have the other two angles now. Or alternatively, alternatively, you the, the tangent the tangent is perpendicular to the radius at the point of contact. So this must be the complement of fifty eight, which is thirty two. Okay. And you're done. Now, have a look at the question and what they give you. Now, I have said before, uh, this guy here, right? What is PQ? What kind of a line is it? It's a chord. A chord. Uh, it's a chord, but more specifically, what kind of, what's special about this chord? It's, it's, it's what I know about it, it is perpendicular to the tangent at P. It's a normal, okay? And I hope you instantly should recognize that because you see this formula. That's the... This is the whole reason why I gave you those formulas. Not so you could quote them, but so you could recognize them. Right? So that's the normal. And then they say, prove that this is true. Okay? Now, as I've mentioned before, they'll give you the result. They say, do not prove it, as we said. So lucky you, they've handed it to you. If they did not state this line, you would need to derive that. It's not hard. Like, you just take the, um, the gradient at the point, you take the negative reciprocal, and off you go. It's not hard to get that equation. But they've handed to you, that's nice. And then they say this, right? Now, you look at it for a second with me. Clearly, this is going to be our starting point, right? Like, this is what I know about this situation, and I don't know very much else. So I'm going to begin from here. Now, I'm going to begin from here, and I'm somehow going to get to here. Do you notice, this only has the perennial P in it. That should make sense, because it's defined as the normal at P, right? But this has Q's in it. How did it get Q's in it? It's not a rhetorical question. How did it get Q's? Because, because it's not just a normal, it's, like you told me, a chord, P, Q. It has to go through Q. So therefore, my first line says, since Q lies on P, Q, like by definition, because it's P, Q, right? The equation of P, Q is satisfied by the coordinates of Q. You see that? You see, I, I'm taking these, and they should work in this equation, right? That's all I've done. Taking Q, I've substituted it in. So here is where I saw X, so I'm substituting in 2AQ. And here is where I saw Y. There's a PY there. So that becomes PAQ squared, because AQ squared is the Y coordinate, right? Now from here, it's just a bit of algebra, honestly. I, I know what I'm starting with. I know where I'm going, okay? So I can see, huh, how am I going to get rid of, well, there's no A's. That's easy to get rid of. What do I do with the A's? Divide I divide through by A because every single term in my um, expression here on the left hand side has A in it. So I divide through. That looks good. I notice I've got a P cubed 
here, but no p cubed appear in the result I'm trying to get to you. So what does that imply to you? I'm going to have to do some factorizing and therefore some division, some cancelling, because I can't leave that PQ flying around. So when I do this, I can see pretty quickly I've got two of these, right? 2Q and a minus 2P, so that's easy to factorize. And what I'm left with also has a common factor, namely, what's the common factor here? It's P, isn't it? Uh, which is exactly what I wanted to get rid of the PQ, okay? So I get my two lots of this, my lot of this, once I see I've got some factorization happening, the difference of squares becomes an obvious next step because I need to cancel out that Q minus P. Now, not that it's the main point, but why can I cancel Q minus P? It's, it's written down, right? Because they're not equal. Because P and Q aren't the same point. They can't be the same point, right? By definition, P and Q are different spots. So therefore, Q minus P is not zero. Therefore, I can divide by it. Once I've divided by it, I'm there. Like, I just have to re-expand and I'm done. Okay? Are you happy with how I did that? Mark, do you want to briefly explain what was your approach? Well, QP is the normal. So yep. it's perpendicular to the tangent at P. Yep. And we find that like the tangent at P is just P. So you mean the gradient? Oh, I mean gradient, yeah. Okay. Yep. So the gradient of the tangent is just P? Yep. Yeah. And then the gradient of PQ is P plus Q on 2. Ah, yeah, okay. So very good. So what is he just stop there? Because you've actually said something, a conclusion. That where is he getting that from? How does he know the gradient of this um, chord is that? It's the average of the two. Good, because by definition, and though admittedly you might actually have to do a little bit of work to get there, you may have to use any gradient formula, right? But we know that the equation of this chord, like we've, we've rehearsed this before, is y equals half p plus q x and minus, minus, plus. minus plus. I don't know. Minus, minus APQ. Plus? Minus, minus the middle. <laughs> minus APQ. Okay, now, because I can see there's the gradient, right? And we concluded what that actually means is it's the average of the gradient of P and the gradient of Q. So, so you said that this is, what did you say? It was um, Q or P, that's right. There's our average there. And because we know that these two, if I call this M1 and M2, they're perpendicular by definition, right? Mm -hmm. So, and then you, you're going to go ahead and do your work from there. Am I right? That's pretty cool. cool. I like that. That's good. Uh, I suppose my proviso is you've got to you've got to demonstrate that, but it, it doesn't take very long, does it? Uh, it'll probably be trivial compared to what I do. All right. Now part two again, another show. Okay. If the chords OP and OQ are perpendicular, so that immediately tells you this line here. Right. That's the chords are. Perpendicular, so that's what you can know about their gradients. I want to show the p squared equals two, so I need to know what these two gradients are, and they're not hard to find. I find this gradient here, p on two. Find the gradient there. Uh, yeah. I don't even really need to find it because it's exactly yeah. the same argument, which is why I say similarly. Okay, and then I'm just substituting in p on two times q on two is negative one, and out pops this, which you can substitute back into part one. Okay, are you happy? And there's my result. Thank you.